So a few months ago, I wanted to get in sync with the action in Silicon Valley. I wanted to learn about the problems that people were thinking of today, and once those problems are solved, we'll have something useful in the future. So the way to start with something like that is to go read news websites. So I did that, and then I found that whatever appears on the websites, it actually started maybe a few months ago, maybe a few years ago, and now it's newsworthy, so it's being reported. That's not what I was looking for. I was looking for problems that are emerging now, people are thinking about them now, and then they will work on them for a little while before they become solution, before we find solutions. So the next thing I could do was to go talk with people in my social network. I knew most of my friends, and I knew what they were up to, and that was, that, that was not much help. So you probably face the same sort of situation in your life. You have a complex calculus assignment due on Monday, and you're having a hard time. And you know your friends. If they were help, you would have solved the problem. You have a big party coming up at your place. You want to impress the heck out of people who are coming by cooking amazing food. If you knew how to do it, if you had friends who knew how to do it, you'd be fine. But if your problem persists, there is something that needs to be done. And I realized, once I had gone through the news sites, once I had looked at my own friends and stuff like that, that I needed to go out because there were people out there who knew, who were working on the problems that I was looking for, right? So they were the people who could help me. So when you mention, hey, you know, there are, you're not necessarily connected with the people who could be most helpful for you, once you mention that, it kind of intuitively begins to make sense to a lot of people. So what problems do we face when we are trying to find such people? I mean, look at our own lists of contacts and stuff like that, right? So those of us who are socially active, we end up with maybe 500, maybe 1,000, or maybe a little bit more contacts. There is seven billion people out in the world. There is somebody out there, most likely more than one, who could help solve your problem. So how do we find those people, and how do we connect with them is the, is the thing that we want to focus on. So let's look at you know, the current state of the art in connecting, in social networking, et cetera, and try to find a solution. How do we fix that? Okay. So current social network basically promote the notion of links and contacts, et cetera. They typically encourage you to connect with people who you already know, right? So that's the current state of the art, and if you don't know those people, they will create hurdles for you, they'll make it more difficult for you, they will discourage you from connecting with those people. So let's take a quick uh, poll here. Um, how many of you have, uh, let's say in Facebook or LinkedIn, or whatever is your favorite social network, links more than 1,000 or so? Can you just raise your hand? Okay. So this includes people who have 1,000 or more links. You guys are balling out of control. <laughs> okay. 1,000 people, think about it. We are just a few hundred here. 1,000 or more. There is people I've met who have 2,000 links. This is about 2,000 people up on that slide. So if I ask you, how many of you know, out of those people who have 1,000 or 2,000 or so, how many of you know, let's say half of them? Say you personally actually know half of your social network. Anybody? Although you guys are seriously walling out of control. There is a couple. Okay, so when I say you personally know, what I mean is you kind of communicate with them on a regular basis and they respond back. You meet over lunch or dinner. You go on birthdays. They come to your birthday. So just imagine, if you were doing that with 500 people, how many birthdays are you going to celebrate every month? <laughs> That's a lot. Okay? So what we find is that, you know, let's take out 
you know, the half the people. We say, well, you know, there is only a very few people who are exceptions, really, who know half of their social network. How many people here know about 500? If you had 2,000 contacts, 500. If you have 1,000, then 250, and so on. So those guys who raise their hand, obviously, they are there. But anybody else? Not that many, and it's not surprising, OK? So we keep doing this for a little bit. And you find that you end up actually with a small number of people. And this small number is really not that small, if you think about it. Okay, so if you had, let's say, 200 people that you were communicating with, and you knew them one-on-one, -on -one, you knew who these people are, what they do, and they know you, that's a lot of people, okay? So you end up with a small number of people who are really your friends, and then who are these other guys? They are your Facebook friends. So you have real friends, and then you have your Facebook friends. Okay. Let's go forward a little bit um, and, and see what else is going on. So a little while ago, my niece called me, and she says, hey, can you connect me, connect me with this guy? I said, I don't think I know that guy. And she insisted that, that, that I did. I said, what makes you think I know that person? She says, oh, because he's in my LinkedIn network. I said, I have absolutely no idea who that guy is and why I connected with him, when I connected with him, and I have never communicated with him. Okay, so he is my LinkedIn friend. And by the way, those of you who are on both networks, you realize that LinkedIn friends are kind of higher notch than Facebook friends, right? And even there, we don't know. So there is a kind of a hierarchy of uselessness in social contacts as well. Right? So if you are looking for a job or something, then LinkedIn makes sense. Other than that, all of your contacts are not really all that much use for you. So 90% of the people, if you are actually looking for a job, so this is important, there is about 90% of people who just go online and try to find a job. Okay? And they think the entire thing happens online. Look at this. So a very large number of jobs, even in Silicon Valley, which is all networked and stuff, they happen by just meeting with people. Okay? So you will go to a lot of companies which will have a little blurb on their website saying, oh, we are looking for people. We are hiring, right? Almost every single website says we are hiring people. How do they hire people? If you were to go just to a random company out there who has on their website, it says we are hiring people, just go to their office. Okay? Meet up with them and say who you are and why you are there. There is very high chance that you will actually find something there. So if you're looking for a job, you really need to go and do what is offline networking, which is you need to go to those networking events you, do, you need to go to those informational meetings, or you just walk into the company and say, here I am, I'm looking for a job, this is what I can do for you. And if you did that, many times in a day, you will find a job quickly. Okay? So we have so many Facebook friends, we have so many other social network friends. Uh, what do these guys do? Okay, they are obviously connected with us. There must have been a reason, right? And we're connected with them, so there must have been a reason. So they are, vast majority of them, are basically busy generating superfluous content about themselves. And they are very eager to share that with the whole world. Okay? So basically, it's I, me, and myself, and my dog. And uh, we will take those pictures of my, my own dog, a, a, a 20 or a 30 megapixel picture, and blast it to my entire social network. And they say, why the heck is he sending me those kinds of pictures? And so this is what is going on. Basically, it's leading to this narcissistic behavior. Anything that I do or involves me must be important. So let's talk Twitter for a moment. So many people think tweets are authentic, they are spontaneous, they are real. 
but the reality is actually quite a bit different. Okay, so tweets are absolutely not authentic, vast majority of them. Yes, there are a few people who send authentic tweets. There are people who send thought of the day. Vast majority of those people have programmed their thought of the day for the next almost a year. And there is a bot which sends one of those out every morning. And there is people out there who thinks, oh man, this guy came up with a brilliant thought for the day. It's not as if he just came up with that right now, which is what they're trying to promote. These are all being sent by the bots. So Twitter has basically become a marketing platform. So if you want to receive more marketing information, Twitter is good for you. Obviously, it's good for those guys who want to send marketing information. And you know, with the new election coming up, Twitter is going to get very, very busy. So if you want to receive more and more of that, yes, indeed. But don't be under the impression that this is authentic and real and spontaneous and things like that. That's what Twitter was really designed for. So current social networking empowers who knows who. So they will say that, you know, you know these people, so you should connect with them. And if you don't know, don't even bother approaching them. And there are networks which will actually discourage you actively. Example, LinkedIn. Okay? So when you try to approach somebody who is useful for you, but you don't know that person, they will say, oh, don't do that. Okay? So what is happening in the current generation of these networks is that it's encouraging a gatekeeper behavior. These are people who have some high value connections and they will connect you with those guys for a fee. So that's their business. So instead of being a facilitator of connections, they are actually inhibitors of connections because that's how they make their living. Okay? So if that is the state of the art, then what can we do? So we have looked at the first generation of networking, which is what we are going through. We have looked at Facebook, we have looked at LinkedIn, we have looked at Twitter, and we have kind of just talked about the side effects. Obviously, there are good things about them as well, but there are lots of other side effects that we tend to kind of ignore. So if that is what this is leading to, then it's time for us to direct our energy somewhere else and try to find something which is more useful for us. So let's explore the world of people who are not on our current list. Let's see how can we find them. These are the people who are going to be useful for us, the problem that we are trying to solve. And how many times have we come across situations? You run into somebody, you start talking with them, and you say, oh man, I should have met you like yesterday or a week before or a month before. This happens to all of us, right? So there is a bunch of value in running into new people or meeting with new people, right? Okay. So that being the case, let's open up for our own sake. Let's go out, meet with new people, and, and, uh, and connect with them and talk with them. So we need a new way to find and get this process, uh, find these new connections, and get the process of sharing happening. So how do we do this? Well, if I have a way of sending my signal, my signal is, let's say, the, the things that I'm interested in, the problem that I'm trying to solve. And if you have a way to receive that signal, then we can connect. Whether or not we knew each other from before is not all that important. We have something in common between us, and that's a good enough basis to get started. Okay. So um, if you look at um, your telephone networks, so I'm going to draw an analogy that everybody will be able to um, appreciate. So there is AT&T and Verizon and probably 15 other uh, communication, telecommunication operators who are sending signals out. But your phone is looking for only one particular signal. As soon as it finds that signal, the connection happens and you're in business. That's the kind of signaling and the signal reception that we want to enable. So the question is, how do we go about doing it, et cetera? And once we have found that connection, what makes us think that, you know, I have found a, uh, somebody very useful, or that other person has found me. What makes us think that people will actually help each other out? 
Okay? So finding is the first problem. The second problem is what makes us think that they will actually be willing to help me out. That is where the sociology of human behavior comes in. People are very willing to help each other out. Gifting or volunteering is very, very common among us. And you just heard in the beginning, there is some 16 people who have spent a tremendous amount of their time to organize this event. They're not getting anything out of it. Uh, another very specific example is that of uh, Denmark. 43% of Denmark population over the ages of 16, they volunteer one way or another. And they are the happiest people on earth. So this has been going on for many, many, many years. You can go read surveys. They are rated as the happiest people on earth. And that many people um, volunteer and give gift of their time, etc., for free. In the ancient days, when I was a student, we used to have a mailing list, technical mailing list. So if I had a question about one of the programs that I was writing, and I was stuck, I would mail that question on that mailing list, and people would respond to me. These were real experts who will spend their good time responding to my question. So more recently, you have things like Quora or Wikipedia. They have become uh, very, very important resources. We can't live without these things these days. And this is all volunteer-run uh, resource. So in my own faith, in the San Jose Sikh Temple, they feed something like 25 to 30,000 meals per month. Okay? Anybody can go and have a meal there. The people who are sponsoring this, they are not getting anything out of it. You're not paying them money. You don't, most of the times, you don't even know who's doing this, who's sponsoring those meals. That's another example. I'm going to give you one more example. Burning Man. So some 65,000 people go to this event, which lasts over some like five days. They have no previous connections with anybody who actually goes there. So you just end up at Burning Man. And there are, if you run out of food, somebody will give you a gift of food. And more importantly, if you run out of booze, somebody will give you booze. <laughs> Where does that happen? Most of the times, your Facebook friends are busy consuming your booze rather than giving you free booze. Right? But that happens at Burning Man. And Burning Man is not just a hippie kind of show. There are very senior business executives who go there. And they benefit from Burning Man by being there, by connecting with other people, and coming across people who they would have never met as a standard part of their job. So now we have realized how important it is for us to open up. And um, now the question is, well, yes, we talk about signaling. And we knew if somebody will receive the signal, they will most likely be willing to help. Now what's the next step? How do we go about doing it? So during this break, I think we are going to have a break after a, a quick performance here. You will all go out. You'll hang out in the lobby. And many of you will probably run into uh, somebody you didn't know before. And you'll have a good conversation. It's always fun to meet with new people, right? But how do you know that you have met with the most useful person for you? So there is a few hundred people here. You have a problem to solve. Hopefully, there is somebody here who can help you solve that problem. Okay, so it happens in our, all large conventions, conferences, or gatherings of this type. So we need to find a way where you can connect with those people and get the conversation going. Right? That's the problem that we're trying to solve. So it's going to take us a little bit to solve this problem. But in the meantime, what we can do is, first of all, to open up make more contacts, make new contacts, talk to people face to face, not just send pictures and like those pictures and dislike those pictures and things like that. Talk to people. That's what is going to bring you real value. Give help, get help, open up. Thank you. <laughs>